reproductive behavioral patterns in animals the reproductive behavioral pattern in different types of animals means the mechanism of behaviors involved by which the sperm is brought to the egg and the parental care of the resulting young is ensured behavior related to the production of offsprings include such patterns as the establishment of the mating system courtship sexual behavior parturition and the care of the young successful reproductive efforts require the establishment of a situation favorable for reproduction this often requires behavior leading to the union of male and female gametes and behavior that facilitates or ensures the survival and development of the young the mere union of gametes is not generally sufficient for successful reproduction for each species there is a complex set of behavioral adaptations that coordinate the timing and patterning of reproductive activity typically these entails integration of both overt behavioral and internal physiological events in both male and female all of which are intricately enmeshed in manners adapted to the environment in which the animals live the behavioral patterns related to the reproduction tend to be relatively stereotyped within a species but diverse among different species especially distant related species the end products of cycles of reproductive activity are viable fertile offsprings which in turn will reproduce and thus perpetuate the species introduction reproduction is a process by which organisms replicate themselves assuring continuation of their species the two basic forms are asexual and sexual asexual reproduction example fission spore formation regeneration and vegetative reproduction produces an offspring genetically identical to the single parent example hydra sexual reproduction produces a new individual through the union of special sex cells that is the gametes usually from different parents gametes result from meiosis gamete union results in a zygote which is the first cell of a new organism sexual reproduction ensures that each offspring is genetically unique except in the case of twin births most animals including all vertebrates reproduce sexually it is the property inherent to all organisms by which offsprings are reproduced to ensure the continuity of life the start of reproduction in some organisms coincides with the cessation of growth in other organisms reproduction does not entail a cessation of growth it halts with the onset of old age or continues until organisms die there also are some organisms that reproduce for the first time several years after the cessation of their growth in some organisms reproduction occurs only once in a lifetime in others it is a repeated process some fish species reproduce but once in a lifetime however repeated reproduction is much more common in both the living worlds every species has its own reproduction rate which sometimes varies greatly owing to the conditions of existence reproductive behavior reproductive behavior means an activity directed towards perpetuation of a species the enormous range of animal reproductive modes is matched by the variety of reproductive behavior reproductive behavior in animals includes all the events and actions that are directly involved in the process by which an organism generates at least one replacement of itself in an evolutionary sense the goal of an individual in reproduction is not to perpetuate the population or the species rather relative to the other members of its population it is to maximize the representation of its own genetic characteristics in the next generation the dominant form of reproductive behavior for achieving this purpose is sexual rather than asexual although it is easier mechanically for an organism simply to divide into two or more individuals even many of the organism that do exactly this and they are not all the so called primitive forms every so often intersperse the normal asexual pattern with sexual reproduction now let us discuss the basic concepts and features involved in the reproductive behavioral pattern number 1 the dominance of sexual reproduction two explanations have been given for dominance of sexual reproduction both are related to the fact 
that the environment in which an organism lives changes in space and time and the evolutionary success of an organism is determined by how well it adapts to such changes. The physiological and morphological aspects of an organism that interact with the environment are governed by the organism's germplasm, the genetic materials that determine hereditary characteristics. Unlike asexual methods, sexual reproduction allows the reshuffling of the genetic material both within and between individuals of one generation resulting in the potential for an extraordinary array of offsprings, each with a genetic makeup different from that of its parents. According to the proponents of the so-called long-term theory for the dominance of sexual reproduction, sexual reproduction will replace asexual reproduction in the evolutionary development of an organism because it assures greater genetic variability, which is necessary if the species is to keep pace with its changing environment. According to the proponents of the short-term theory, however, the above argument implies that natural selection acts on groups of organisms rather than on individuals, which is contrary to the Darwinian concept of natural selection. They prefer to view the advantages of sexual reproduction on a more immediate and individual level. An organism employing sexual reproduction has an advantage over one employing asexual means because the greater variety of offsprings produced by the former results in a large number of genes being transmitted to the next generation. The latter view is probably more nearly correct, especially in violently fluctuating and unpredictable environments. The former theory is probably correct when viewed in terms of its advantage to the individuals that are spreading in geographic range, thereby increasing the likelihood of encountering different environments. Number 2. Natural Selection and Reproductive Behavior Natural selection places a premium on the evolution of those physiological, morphological and behavioral adaptations that will increase the efficiency of the exchange of genetic materials between individuals. Organisms will also evolve mechanisms for sensing whether or not the environment is always permissive for reproduction or if sometimes are better than others. This involves not only the evolution of environmental sensors but also the concurrent evolution of mechanisms by which this transformation can be proceeded and acted upon. Because all seasons are not usually equally conductive, individuals whose genetic backgrounds result in their offsprings at a more favorable rather than a less favorable period will eventually dominate succeeding generations. This is the basis for the seasonality of reproduction amongst most animal species. Natural selection also results in the evolution of systems for transmitting and receiving information that will increase the efficiency of two individuals' finding each other. These attraction systems are usually but not always species specific. Once the proper individuals have found each other, it is clearly important that they are both in a state of reproductive readiness that their sensory receptors are tuned to the same environmental stimuli is usually sufficient to achieve the synchrony that is proper timing in the lower organisms. Apparently, however, this is not enough in the more complex organisms in which the fine tuning for reproductive synchrony is accomplished chiefly by a process called courtship. Another evolutionary necessity is a mechanism that will guide the partners into the proper orientation for efficient copulation. Such mechanisms are necessary for both internal and external fertilization, especially the latter, where improper orientation would result in a complete waste of the eggs and sperms. In most organisms, the period of greatest mortality occurs between birth or hatching and the attainment of maturity. This is not surprising that some of the most elaborate evolutionary adaptations of an organisms 
are revealed during this period. Natural selection has favored an enormous variety of behavior in both parents and offsprings that serves to ensure the maximum survival of the young to maturity. In some animals, this involves not only protecting the young against environmental vicissitudes and providing them with adequate nutrition, but also giving them in a more or less active manner the information they will need to reproduce in turn. Number 3. Post-fertilization behavior. Various types of behavior ensure that a maximum number of fertilized eggs or young will survive to become reproductive adults. Clearly, the number of eggs produced and their size represents a balance achieved by natural selection. This balance conforms to some optimum compromise between producing many eggs containing little food for the development of the young or fewer eggs with more provisions. There has been considerable controversy about the factors that limit the number of offsprings and organisms can reproduce. It has been suggested that among the animals in which the offsprings are dependent on the parents for varying lengths of time, clutch or litter size has been adjusted through natural selection to the maximum number of offsprings that the parents on the average can feed. There are on the other hand organisms that do not practice parental care and produce millions of eggs. According to one school of thought, these species have such a high fecundity that is productivity because the eggs and larvae suffer a very high mortality rate. Hence, it is necessary for such animals to produce thousands, even millions of eggs just to obtain a few reproductive adults. An opposing school of thoughts, however, says that such species have high mortality rates because of their great fecunditys. By similar reasoning, low death rates would be the consequence of low fecundity. Number 4. Protective Adaptations A number of adaptations have evolved to protect the eggs and larvae or species not attended by adults. In one such adaptation, the eggs or larvae are distasteful, inedible or apparently harmful to potential enemies. The eggs of the jellyfish Bougainvillea, for example, contain stinging cells on the surface that deter the predators. Many female butterflies deposit their eggs on the plants that contain poisonous compounds which the larvae incorporate into their bodies making them distasteful. When disturbed, many insect larvae, especially those that are camouflaged, give a so-called startle display. Several caterpillars, for example, raise their heads as if to bite or their hinder parts in the manner of a wasp as if to sting. Others suddenly present striking color patterns previously hidden. Most of these display have been shown experimentally to be effective deterrents against predators. Number 5. Caring for offsprings. Animals that do not care for the young must provide for the nutritional needs of their offsprings. One way of doing so is by producing an egg with a sufficient large yolk supply that the young when hatched are already at an advanced, almost independent state. A peculiar example of this is found in the incubator birds which cover their eggs with soil and debris to create a mound of considerable depth effectively providing heat for the developing eggs. After a very long incubation period, the young emerges as fully feathered miniature adults and are capable of flying within 24 hours. Before sealing the nest that they make for their eggs, many insects such as certain solitary wasps stock the nest with food. In a more bizarre manner, other solitary wasps place one egg in the body of an insect or a spider previously paralyzed by the wasp. Upon hatching, the larva eats the still living host. Social parasitism is an another fascinating aspect of post-fertilization behavior. It is found in certain insects and birds. In this case, 
the true parents do not care for their eggs or offsprings rather they place them under the foster care of the other species often but not always to the detriment of the foster parents offspring in certain parasitic species of cuckoos the females are divided into groups or gentes each of which lays eggs with a color and pattern unlike those of the other groups the females of each groups usually select a particular species as the host and more often than not the eggs of the parasite closely resemble those of the potential foster parent this mimicry has evolved because many host species throw eggs not resembling their own out of the nest some young cuckoos also exhibit a behavior called backing in which they push out the others nestlings and monopolize the food supply various types of behavior ensure that a maximum number of fertilized eggs or young will survive to become reproductive adults clearly the number of eggs produced and their size represents a balance achieved by natural selection this balance conforms to some optimum compromise between producing many eggs containing little food for the development of the young or fewer eggs with more provisions there has been considerable controversy about the factors that limit the number of offsprings an organism can produce it has been suggested that among animals in which offsprings are dependent on the parents for varying lengths of time clutch or litter size has been adjusted through natural selection to the maximum number of offsprings that the parents on the average can feed there are on the other hand organisms that do not practice parental care and produce millions of eggs according to one school of thoughts these species have such a high fecundity because the eggs and larvae suffer a very high mortality rate hence it is necessary for such animals to produce thousands even millions of eggs just to obtain a few reproductive adults an opposing school of thought however says that such species have high mortality rates because of their great fecundities by similar reasoning low death rate would be the consequence of low fecundity most animals give birth to live young the outstanding exceptions are the egg laying monotremes of australia the platypus ornithorhynchus and the echidnas that is the spiny anteaters in the duck bill platypus a brief courtship involving a chase in the water precedes copulation the two eggs that are produced are placed in a burrow and hatch in 8 to 10 days in the reproductive behavior of the spiny anteater tachyglossus the female apparently lays her single egg directly into her pouch as already mentioned another general aspects of reproductive behavior in mammals is the estrus cycle knowledge of which is essential to an understanding of the mechanism involved in the reproduction of any mammalian species in most cases females are responsive to males only during that portion of the estrus cycle when they are in heat that is to say when one of more eggs have broken out of the ovary and are in the process of descending into the uterus the factors causing this event vary significantly but in some such as rabbits horses and cats copulation itself is the main stimulus in general however those mammals particularly the large ones that live in temperate areas such as bears dogs wolves foxes seals and some deer as well as antelopes for example have one estrus cycle per year mammals that live in warmer zone such as some areas of the tropics tend to have more than one estrus cycle per year the sexual cycle in males the height of which in some forms is referred to as the rut is not surprisingly usually correlated with that of the females the males of many species of domestic animals however seem to be capable of copulating at almost any time of the year another general aspect of the mammalian reproductive behavior is that they do not normally form pairs exceptions occur in certain carnivores and in some primates 
in which parental care is divided between the sexes. As in many insects, the courtship behavior of most mammals does not appear to be elaborate, but just as in the former group, most mammals, humans are an exception, have an acute sense of smell. It is possible, therefore, that many of the chemical attractants wafted into the air by receptive females are actually courtship displays that are more complex than has been realized. This is not to say, of course, that visual, auditory and tactile displays do not occur. Many deers and antelopes, for example, have rather complex ritualized visual displays employing such movements as strutting and arcing of the heads as well as conspicuous color patterns. Males in many species discharge urine on females as a preliminary to copulation. Tactile and auditory displays have been shown to be important in aquatic mammals such as porpoises and whales. In addition to a number of mammalian pheromones, other other effects occur in mammals that aside from their simple advertising value have an important influence on reproductive behavior. It has been shown that when a recently impregnated female mouse is exposed to the udder of a male other than the one with which she has mated, implantation of the eggs in the uterus often fails. As a result, there is a rapid return to estrus. The udder of a strange male may signify to a female rodent an unfavorable situation in which to raise young, in as much as a number of male rodents attempt to attack offsprings not their own. Although it is not yet certain, there might be an adaptive explanation for this behavior. The population fluctuations of rodents have attracted much attention and perhaps correctly, studies have focused on the ecological parameters of these fluctuations. For example, it has been demonstrated in the laboratory that certain behavioral mechanisms involving others exercise profound control over the reproduction and population levels of rodents. It has also been shown that the udder of mice can stimulate the production of hormones that causes a decrease in the reproductive capacity of other mice. In another study, estrus was suppressed and many pseudo pregnancies developed when four or more female mice were grouped together in absence of a male. These results offer a partial explanation for the reproduction of population growth in rodent colonies with high population densities. Number 6. Evolution of Reproductive Behavior There is a popular tendency to think of primitive animals in a phylogenetic or a decent sense as lacking elaboration. That is, the animals of earlier geological periods has simpler displays or perhaps lacked crests or pheromones or elaborate communal displays in comparison with their present day counterparts. There is no a priori reason for this belief. The fossil record indicates that the societies of which these animals were a part were as diverse and complex as those in which their relatives now live. Certainly, their display repertories should have been equally complete. This is not to say, however, that the primitive forms of reproductive behavior use the same displays for courtship as do the modern forms.